In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all this morning. Today we hear Jesus uh, continuing in that Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel. Today we hear him say to his earliest disciples, and we hear him saying to us, and I think these are words of encouragement and affirmation. We hear him saying to us, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Jesus, I think, is communicating uh, his, um, his hope in us, his need for us to be, to be different, to be willing to be set apart for this greater work, which is his purpose, which was the purpose of his life, the purpose of his being. You are the salt of the earth. When I heard him say that this week, I was right back in my grandparents' home when they would use that, um, that description to describe someone. I don't think we use it so much today. He or she really is the salt of the earth, right? There's a goodness about that person or uh, just some common decency uh, in that person. I can still remember them using that language. Um, and more than that, I still remember my grandmother more than my grandfather, talking about salt and what it meant to her family. Uh, they were, I think I've shared this with you before, they were uh, tobacco farmers here in North Florida, uh, out in the Panhandle. And um, it wasn't, what I learned from her is that uh, more than I realized, certainly I've come to understand this more over the years, but that uh, their lives were so dependent on salt and in fact, up until about 100 years ago, I don't know if you know this or not, but up until about 100 years ago, salt was pretty scarce. It was hard to, it was hard to find. It wasn't easy to find, and the people who had it really used it to make a lot of money. It, uh, it was very, very costly. Uh, and yet, the way my grandmother describes the use of salt in their, in their home, in their household, was, that it, was it really was... Uh, to have salt was to, was to have that, that very thing that could preserve life for them. It's how they preserved their meats. It's how they preserved and cured their meats was using salt. And she really describes it as a matter of life and death for many, many folks. And so she describes it as this, as this wonderful preservative. She also describes it uh, she talks about using salt to, as, a, as, a, as a medicinal uh, as a, a medicinal agent, something that they used uh, to try to, to cure and to help with various illnesses. Even today, you'll hear someone say, have you, used, have you gargled with warm, warm salt water, right? Warm salt water. And of course, she, she of course talked about salt as that, as that, uh, that agent that would uh, flavor Flavor the foods. Uh, she had a, um, she, I think my grandmother had a real problem with salt. Um, it's one of the reasons why I have such a problem with salt uh, to this day. It's, uh, salt is really good. It's really good. It has this, um, it just has this ability to change something really quick, doesn't it? It can make something that's kind of bland suddenly be, wow, rich and tasty and Really good. So when Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, Jesus is saying, I need you to flavor my world. I need you to be, I need people to be able to find uh, something in you that, that enriches their lives, something that makes the world different. Wherever you are, wherever you're standing, whatever your, your position is in life, whatever the situation is, I need you to be the salt of the earth. I need you to bring a unique flavor to that moment, to that, to that place. And especially, especially in a world that is where societies have historically, societies that at one time or another, they've all experienced a measure of, of decay and, and uh, deterioration. All those, those, uh, those forces of death that can creep into our social structures, whether they be greed or lust or indifference. All of these forces that can press in on our social structure, 
our communities. You hear Jesus saying today, it's in those moments and those places that I need you as my disciples to be agents of something different. Agents who are, who are not allowing themselves to be, um, to be pushed back by those forces, but rather agents of, of change and possibility and hope. I need you to flavor my world. Flavor my world. The sense of affection, love and grace, encouragement, affirmation. All those things that you found in my life, I was right back this week in, um, I, it wasn't this week, it was the week before, I was meeting with a woman in the parish whose husband, I had read at his, I had read the burial office uh, when he died a year or so ago, and as I was talking to her, and this came back to me this week, I realized, um, as I was thinking back on his life and my time with him, I really we really had a wonderful connection with each other. And it, and it wasn't because we agreed on much of anything. In fact, we, he disagreed with me a lot. I was reminding her of that this week. She said, well, he did with me too. Um, I, you know, he disagreed with me about a lot of things. She said, I said, you know what I remember about him the most, though, is that I don't remember those. I don't remember what we disagreed about. I remember what we, I remember how he always came at me with a, a measure of encouragement and affection. Words of affirmation, that's what I remembered about him. And that's, what, and that's what made my relationship with him so special is because I wanted to hear how he disagreed with me. I really cherished that in, my, in our relationship. I wanted to hear because somehow in my listening and hearing, it made me better. It enriched my life. But I wanted to hear because I knew that he was always coming to me with that. He was always coming at me not with a, a spirit, a critical spirit, a, a, a critical spirit that was destructive. It was a critical spirit that was affirming and constructive. It was hopeful. It was, it was salty in the sense that it was always... It was, there was always a measure of love and affection and grace and hope in it. And so I heard, we learned to disagree well with each other. We learned to disagree well. That was a real gift to me uh, in my life and in my, in my ministry. And it's not just with him, it's with so many of you over the years. Um, so many of you over the years have shared the same with me. I know that you don't always agree with me, but you, but you always continue to come back toward me with something that's hopeful and positive and affirming and encouraging. Societies, societies are always threatened by those forces that will threaten to, to cause us to spoil and deteriorate. It's in those times that you and I have got to find the courage to stay to stay present and visible in those times of skirmish in the hopes that what we bring in our, in our saltiness, in our connections with the life of Jesus, the stuff that he has given to us, that he has deposited into my life and yours will somehow transform that skirmish into something hopeful, something positive, something that we can all build upon. I remember... Um, do you remember when Cammy Young was here? Uh, Cammy Young was a priest that was here at Christ Church. Uh, this has been years ago now. Um, I was talking to Cammy again recently, and I was reminded this past week again of a moment in time. I remember Cammy was really, there was a day when she was really struggling here at the church. She was really um, kind of worked up about something, and I was trying to figure out. I went to her, and I said, you know, what's, what's going on? And uh, she said, well, I'm part of this thing tonight down in downtown Jacksonville, and I'm doing this work with these cl other clergy, and I'm, I'm really concerned about one of the clergy and how he uh, plans to present uh, his part of this, this talk or this presentation. And I said, well, have you talked to him about it? And she said, no. She said, um, no. <laughs> you know, um, 
I, I have it. And I said, well, sounds to me like that's what you want to do. Sounds like that's what you need to do or that's what you want to do. And I said, what is it that bothers you? She said, it's not, I heard something of what he wants to say, and it's not what he's talking about. It's how he's talking about it. It's the spirit in which he is communicating the what. I said, well, I think you just need to talk to him about it. And so that afternoon she did. And I was talking to her the next day, and I said, well, how did it go? And she said, gosh, it went really well. He was so receptive. He was so receptive uh, to my, my, my challenge to him to, that he has so much. He's saying such good things, and it's things that we need to hear. He says, but it, it's that spirit in which you're communicating it. It's the, there's, a, there's a sense of, it's almost like she was suggesting there's this sort of violent rhetoric that was the language I was thinking of this week as I was thinking about what's out there and around us in our society today that I'm most concerned about is this violent rhetoric. It's so, it's beyond impassioned. It's become angry and militant and ugly. And someone at, at 745 was leaving the church this morning and they said, I've gotten to where I just don't even want to, I don't even want to go out. I don't want to be in it anymore. I don't want to talk to anybody about it. I said, oh, no, no, no. I said, no. I said, that's the whole point. I said, you can't, you can't go there because you'll lose your saltiness. If you don't use your saltiness, the very, the really, the really good stuff that God's deposited into the life of his disciples, the good stuff that's in us, the stuff that's full of hope and possibility that's that's conditioned by love and grace. It's able to, to listen to that which is different and, and even disagree well. You have to take that out into the world. You have an obligation as, as a disciple of Christ to communicate something different, to stand apart. It doesn't matter what the skirmish is or what it's about. It's something that I say to folks in my forums all the time. What we say is not nearly as important. What you're talking about is not nearly as important as how you say it. It's the kind of thing we, 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 we preach to our kids, and yet we are terribly miserable at it. You and I have to learn how to communicate, and this is what we have to learn in our country. When we talk about sort of uh, something that's spoiling and deteriorating, like the the meat in my grandmother's home that was only preserved by the power of that, that saltiness that had been gifted to them. You and I have got to get in touch with what it means to be here in this place on a regular basis, making sure that we are true to our purpose for being and, and true to what has been deposited into our lives that is full of hope and possibility for our world and our society, our country, our community, our, our families. You and I have to stay true to that, or we will lose our saltiness. It will be of no use any. It will be of no use anymore. It will do no good. And I'll tell you something. I was watching a. We were watching a movie this past week at home, and I, in fact, I made a little popcorn, uh, a little. But as I was eating the popcorn this week, I realized that you can't have popcorn without a good drink, can you? Because of all that good salt on it. And I realized that if you and I are doing our job, if you and I are standing for something different and learning how to communicate in a way that's hopeful and life-bringing and constructive, if you and I are being just as salty as God needs us to be, you are the salt of the earth, then all those folks out there that are thirsty, we're going to make them thirsty. We're going to make the world around us thirsty for something that can only satisfy that. And the, and the one thing that can only satisfy that thirst is the life, is the life of Jesus the Christ, the one who has deposited this this pearl of such great value into our lives, this pearl of new life and possibility and even eternal life. 
It's this extraordinary gift that we've been given, and it's yours and mine to stand up. More than for anything else, nothing else really matters so much. Not as much as this. And that is what we bring, what we bring from this place out into the world and the difference we make, not so much in what we're talking about, but how we say it. We have much to learn as a country in, the, in these times, and you and I have much to share and much to teach and much to employ that God has given to us to make, that, to make a difference in a really positive and wonderful way. Don't sell yourself short. You're the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth, and it means everything right now, everything. Amen.